There's $200,000 up for grabs in a best ball contest on Underdog Fantasy. And there's still plenty of time to get your entries into the big board before the contest locks on the eve of the NFL draft. I get it, you might be resistant to drafting before these rookies even find their new home in the NFL draft, before the frost of winter has even melted. It might seem crazy, like drafting on hard mode, but it doesn't have to be. Not if you're equipped with the necessary tips and tricks to navigate the complexities of drafting early. And in this video, I've put together the ultimate early drafting cheat sheet by pulling some of the top drafters and streamers on Underdog Fantasy. I asked each of them for their biggest strategy tip in this big board contest, and today I'm going to share that sweet, sweet alpha with you. So here it is, 10 different tips and tricks for taking down the big board contest. Tip number one, adjust to the new quarterback landscape. 2023 brought us the perfect storm for the late round quarterback strategy. One, a few of the elite quarterbacks busted. Two, the entire middle round set of QBs got wiped out by injury. And three, many of the late round QBs like CJ Stroud, Jordan Love, and Brock Purdy proved to be league winners at their cheap price tags. This 2023 recency bias has resulted in an entirely new quarterback landscape on underdog. Here's how John from the Badge Bros is taking advantage. The elite ceiling quarterback tier comes with some very palatable price tags right now, and it's funneling me to a lot of three quarterback builds that are anchor ceiling QB, plus a dusty veteran, plus a rookie ceiling chaser, and I'm a huge fan of it. Something like Josh Allen, plus Russell Wilson, plus Bo Nix. It is indeed a great time to have your cake and eat it too at the quarterback position. There's deals across the entire draft board, and this strategy from John allows you to accomplish a few different things. Things. An elite quarterback who can separate from the position during those important playoff weeks. Multiple stacks to help you traverse that playoff gauntlet in weeks 15 through 17. And a young quarterback who can hopefully outperform their ADP in a big way. I was somewhat disappointed that Chess Liam didn't give me a nine bills in every draft tip but he's specifically loving the mid-round QB value right now. Even as a self-professed elite quarterback lover most seasons in the past, the value at quarterback feels incredible in round six plus right now. Guys like Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence, Kyler Murray, Jaden Daniels, and Tua all come to mind. One additional note for some of the pocket passers like Lawrence and Tua and even Joe Burrow and Aaron Rodgers, Keep an eye on whether the users who drafted their pass catchers early already took a quarterback. You can often get insane deals on these pocket passers if you've cornered the market on their stacking partners. In this draft, I recently streamed on Best Ball Breakfast, which by the way, you guys can watch me draft teams every single Monday morning on the Pete Overzet live stream channel at 10 a.m. Eastern. I took Garrett Wilson in the first round and then got Aaron Rodgers at pick 158, a full round past ADP, because there was no one else competing for jet stacks. Be patient at quarterback in these spots because there's huge deals to be had. Tip number two, attack team level correlation. Legendary upside sacrilegious shared one of the most actionable yet overlooked strategies for drafting early. One of my favorite strategies for big board drafts is placing an emphasis on team level bets. That is trying to identify entire offenses that may be mispriced and stacking three to five players from those teams to be able to capture a big win while only having to be correct on one stance. Without the NFL schedule, correlating for the playoff weeks is more challenging if we're trying to predict which opponents might face each other, but we can still get strong correlation simply by stacking a team. We all know the power of correlation, but we also have so little information-wise at this time in the year. As Sacrilegious said, it's very hard to correlate for week 17, so we should lean into what we can control and what we know now. Remember what that seventh place team in Best Ball Mania 2 did? It a Green Bay onslaught with seven different Packers players and a supplementary Bengals stack with four Cincinnati players. In using 11 of their total 18 picks on two teams who exceeded expectations, they were essentially able to eliminate having to get so many things right. They basically hit on only two things, which was the Bengals have a good year and the Packers have a good year. And that was enough. One of my favorite ways to do this is essentially onslaughting the entire offense, not just the quarterback with some wide receivers, but also the tight end and including the running back. 
which is sometimes thought of as unconventional. In one of my first big board drafts, which yes, was before free agency, I took five different players from the Tennessee Titans and three of them all came after pick 165. Instead of trying to predict exactly how a team is going to score points, which gets easier to do as we get closer to the season, make macro team bets that reduce the number of things you have to get right. Tip number three, zero RB is still king. Take it from Davis Maddock. The big board is the perfect... Okay, I, I won't do that this time. The big board is the perfect contest for zero RB. This won't be an original thought, but it should be obvious that a contest that locks so far from the beginning of the season will benefit most from an anti-fragile strategy, which is the entire thesis of drafting zero RB teams. You likely do create more dead teams with a true zero RB construction drafting before the NFL draft, but you also elevate the potential ceiling of any combinations of six to seven running back rosters. I couldn't agree more. Almost every single one of the teams I've drafted in the big board contest have been true zero RB teams. Zero RB was a great way to sidestep some of the landmines that came from free agency, and it remains one of the best ways to sidestep the landmines that are coming in the NFL draft via these incoming rookies. Virtually every single backfield in the league right now is some type of a committee. There's a ton of opportunity cost right now when you take running backs in rounds two through five when an incoming rookie could eat into their workload. Speaking of zero RB, tip number four, grab wide receivers both early and also late. While zero RB is a dominant strategy, Jacob Sanderson explains why you don't wanna get carried away at the beginning of the draft. To me, the wide receiver market in the big board this year is parabolic in nature. The strongest bets are largely contained to the first six rounds as the market has continued prioritizing the position more each season. But with such a deep rookie class, viable speculative bets are available through the end of drafts. I'm attacking the position early, but leaving myself roster space for two to three late round wide receiver darts, meaning plenty of running backs and two plus QBs in the middle rounds. This is a key point for executing these early drafts like the big board, and it differs greatly from post NFL draft contests like Best Ball Mania, where a lot of the rookie wide receiver deals will completely vanish. As Jacob notes, it's likely not optimal to start your draft with five or six straight wide receivers. That's not because they aren't good bets, it's because you want to save a couple of your wide receiver slots for later in the draft and take advantage of what many consider to be a historically good wide receiver class. Like Jacob, I've been balancing this dynamic by taking detours for an elite QB or an elite tight end in the early rounds. For example, I've taken one of either Trey McBride or Mark Andrews in over 56% of my drafts, knowing I can round out my wide receiver room later. This is also the perfect example for why it's valuable to reverse engineer your draft from the back to the front. And looking at positional 2v2s, like an elite tight end with a mid-round rookie wide receiver, or a round five wide receiver with a late round tight end. Knowing what you want to do or what you can do at the end of your drafts and where the value pockets are can greatly inform how you spend your earlier picks. Speaking of which, tip number five, take advantage of this deep rookie wide receiver class. BBM3 champ Pat Corain hammers home the point Jacob just made. Rookie wide receivers are arguably the most reliable way to inject late round projection into your week 15 through 17 lineups. And this rookie wide receiver class is among the deepest ever, with many of the wide receivers going outside the top 150 in the big board, looking likely for day two draft capital. Mix up your bets, but make sure you're well stocked with rookie wide receiver darts. If anyone knows about the benefit of random rookie wide receivers in their best ball lineup, it's the guy who used Tyquan Thornton's week 17 score to win $2 million in best ball mania three. The key note here that Pat emphasizes is mixing up your bets. Don't get too anchored on your specific wide receiver player takes before the NFL draft they will surprise us. Instead, mix and match the wide receivers who are projected for that early draft capital on day one and day two. We know the guys who go early will get opportunities regardless of whether they pan out as a prospect or not. Just ask Quentin Johnston. And most importantly, these opportunities generally come at the end of the season in the fantasy playoffs when it matters the most for our teams. Tip number six, don't forget about the rookie running backs either. Tom Strachan recommends not overlooking these running backs. 
The big board is the perfect tournament for being aggressive on rookie picks. We've now got way more information to work with than we did when this contest opened, and the closer we get to it filling, the more aggressive I'd be on the rookies. And while nobody loves these rookie running backs, there are still backfields in the NFL that need fresh legs. Now's the time to trust the information we have and be bold with our rookie takes. I know a lot of people aren't enthused about this rookie running back class, especially after free agency chewed up a lot of the ideal landing spots, but a perceived weak crop of running backs is making their prices in these early drafts extremely palatable. You basically can have whatever rookie running back you want in rounds 10 through 14, which has historically been the sweet spot for finding rookie zero running back targets. Even if these guys aren't incredible prospects, it doesn't often matter at the running back position. They have lots of outs to being relevant, whether through efficiency, whether winning the job outright over a veteran, or of course, contingent upside via an injury. With the sentiment on these running backs right now, I've been telling myself that Warren Buffett motto, be greedy when others are fearful. My top four drafted running backs in the contest right now are all rookies going after pick 100. Tip number seven, use the news to your advantage. When we're drafting this early, news is constantly flipping the draft board on its head. There's the combine, there's free agency, there's trades. Neil Orfield explains how he leverages this news to his advantage. Stay tuned in so you can anticipate the news. A lot happens in the off season that is unexpected, but many changes are easily anticipated by people who keep their finger on the pulse of the NFL. Yet we see massive ADP moves when the change happens anyways, because many detached drafters are caught off guard. Pat from the Fantasy Dog Pound agrees with Neil and shares an additional tip on how he likes to react to the news. Avoid board drafting. Limit drafting during information lull periods. Take advantage of unsettled ADPs when news drops. And when that news drops, Estimate the new ADP range that the player will rise or fall to. As we discussed in the scroll the F down video, yes, we do have that merch available in the store by the way now. Drafters can't help themselves but get anchored to the ADP, and that includes players who should be rising or falling faster than they inevitably will. You don't necessarily have to hop in a draft the second news breaks either. You can take advantage of the slowly adjusting ADPs in the days or even sometimes weeks after the news occurs. Tip number eight, use your information edge versus early drafters. Drafting right when a contest opens can be extremely lucrative because there's so much uncertainty and savvy drafters can get out ahead of these movements. And this can sometimes tilt those of us who didn't draft right away. Do not type in the chat right now, I got Trey McBride at pick 96. Do not type it in the chat. I do not want to see it. But you also have an edge over the early drafters when you draft late, and that's because you have added information they didn't have when they drafted. You know what happened at the combine. You know what happened in free agency. Fantasy Dog Pound explains how he takes advantage of this. Use new information to create more accurately correlated teams. Players such as Mike Gesicki and Jonu Smith were rarely being drafted at contest open, and now you can stack them with their quarterback at low ownership. I love this one, and it actually dovetails with the scroll the F down video. You don't have to worry about their new ADP because you're thinking about it through the lens of how often were they drafted. The selling point is twofold. One, you know who to stack them with now that they have a new team. And two, they will be on far less teams than other tight ends going in their same ADP range who were drafted throughout the duration of the contest. So you're getting both a correlation and an ownership discount advantage on the early drafting teams. Tip number nine, capitalize on market overconfidence. Chris from Splash Play explains, when it comes to ADP, you have to be more fluid with when to reach and when to scoop up value. The recency bias within drafts has never been higher. Discounts on players who ended the year poorly, huge price jumps just because a guy got slightly improved run out in free agency, which might change anyway in weeks. In this quest to find an edge, people are more prisoners of the moment than ever, particularly for buzzy players and teams. Spike Week's Eric Beimfor expanded on this market overconfidence. The NFL offseason and pre-draft anarchy creates a ton of uncertainty, but the market still gets very confident in most situations. We can exploit many of these for huge gains by finding the situations where drafters are too confident in one direction or the other, like how a backfield will shake out, 
or general player opportunity slash role. Don't be afraid to go away from the herd, especially the later you get in your draft. As we discussed in the Scroll the F Down video, ADP stops mattering around pick 170. Let your convictions and ball knowing take over and zag when you think the market is wrong. Tip number 10, galaxy braining stacks. I wasn't going to end this video without a little galaxy braining. You know how we said earlier that it's nearly impossible to correlate for week 17 before we have the NFL schedule? Well, there is one thing we can do in hopes of trying to land on some game stacks during the playoffs, and that's leaning into stacking teams from the same division. This is because we know two things. One, teams play each other within their division twice. Two, the second divisional meeting often takes place in the final weeks of the regular season. You can even take this divisional stacking stuff one step further by round robining the divisions that play each other across the league. For your sicko reference, here are some divisional cheat sheets from Don Michael, AKA Demo Zone on Twitter. Truly sick stuff. Of course, this stuff should only be used as a tiebreaker, but what's the point of drafting best ball teams in the cold of winter if we're not gonna try to unearth every single micro edge? Honestly, one of the best benefits of early drafting that we haven't mentioned yet is simply getting the reps before the big contests come after the NFL draft. Understanding where the market is at, knowing how to navigate some of these risers and fallers will give you a huge advantage on the players who are drafting for the first time once those contests open. Open. It sounds trite, but practice really does make you better in these drafts. If you're new to Underdog and you want to join us in some of these early drafts, including the big board, use promo code Pete when you sign up for up to a $100 deposit match and make sure you subscribe to the channel on the way out. We'll have tons more best ball strategy videos coming this off season.